In this video, I'm going to walk through how to find and fix errors in your R code by producing a reproducible example of an error, also called a minimum working example or a reprex. This process might seem quite laborious, but tackling errors in a systematic way can save you lots of time that you might otherwise waste by trying to deal with errors in an unsystematic way. The first step in dealing with errors in your code is to not panic. Even the best programmers frequently write code that produces errors. Fixing errors is an intrinsic part of coding in any programming language. You will be able to fix almost any error in your code by approaching it in a calm and systematic way. Lots of errors in R produce quite simple error messages that tell us exactly how to fix the problem. For example, if we try to round a text value to the nearest whole number, R will tell us that we've used a non-numeric argument to a mathematical function. If we look at the code that caused this error, we can see that the number 3.14 is wrapped in quote marks, which makes it a character value rather than a number, and we can't round a character value. If we convert the text value to a numeric variable using the as.numeric function, the round function works as we expect. In other cases, we might need a bit more information to solve a problem. For example, if we try to convert the text 24 February 2023 to a date value, that R recognizes is a date rather than text, we get an error, use of percent %z for input is not supported. This error message doesn't give us enough information to know how to fix the problem though. We know the code percent %z is an issue, but that doesn't tell us how to fix it. In circumstances like this, we can often get the information we need by looking at the help page for the R function we're using. We can do this by typing a question mark on the function name without parentheses in the R console. If we look at the help page for the struct time function, we can see it includes a long list of formatting codes that we can use to tell R how to pass a date stored as text into a date object. If we scroll down to the explanation of the percent %z formatting code, we can see it relates to a time zone abbreviation. But our text doesn't contain a time zone, so percent %z was almost certainly the wrong code to use. If we look through the other formatting codes, we can see that what we probably wanted was the percent %y code to represent the four-digit year 2023. And if we run that code, we see it runs as expected. If we have an error that we cannot fix based just on information in the error message or the help page for a function, we'll need to do some further investigation. This will be particularly necessary when we're dealing with longer pieces of code or errors that do not make it clear which function has caused the problem. The code in this file is supposed to load a data set from a data file, make some minor changes to that data, and then use it to produce a time series chart showing the number of drivers killed or seriously injured in traffic collisions per thousand kilometers traveled in Great Britain for each month from 1969 to 1984. Unfortunately, if we run this code by clicking the source button in our studio, we get an error message in the console saying, data must be a data.frame, or an object coercible by fortify, and then makes the suggestion, did you accidentally pass AES to the data argument? Unlike some other error messages we might see in R, this one is not particularly easy to understand. It tells us the error is in the fortify function, but we haven't used a function called fortify in our code. Fortify is actually a function that ggplot uses in the background, but it's quite likely we wouldn't know that, so that isn't very helpful. Nevertheless, we can check the documentation page for the fortify function by typing question mark fortify in the console. This tells us a few things about the fortify function, but none of them help explain the problem we've encountered. One of the parts of the error message refers to the AES function. But if we look at the two times we've used the AES function in our code, it looks like we've used them appropriately. So at the moment, there's nothing that can help us fix this error. It's in circumstances like this that it's useful to produce a reproducible example of the problem. This is useful for two reasons. First, we will only be able to get help with our code from people online if we can provide them with a version of our code that they can run on their own computer to investigate the problem. But second, the process of isolating exactly what part of our code is causing the issue almost always leads us to being able to fix the problem ourselves. Before we start changing our code into a reprex, it's useful to copy the code into a new file so that we can make changes to it separately from our original code. The first step in creating a reproducible example is to isolate the code in our script 
from anything else in our R session that might be interfering with it. To do that, we can run our code in a separate R session that will only run the code in the script we're interested in. We do that using the render reprex add-in in RStudio. We can access that via the RStudio add-ins menu. If you don't see render reprex in the add-ins menu, that probably means you've not installed the reprex package on your computer. In that case, go to the console and type install.packages reprex to install the reprex package. When you click render reprex, a new window will open asking you what code you want to use to produce a reproducible example. Under where is reprex source, choose current file and press the render button. Once the reprex add-in has run the code, the results will appear in the RStudio viewer panel. You can see here that the result produced by reprex is a copy of our code, with any output produced by the code included as an R comment on the line after the code that produces it. Looking down the code, we can see everything appears fine until we get to an error saying row-data.csv does not exist in the current working directory. This is not the error that we're trying to solve, so isolating our code from the R session it was running in has changed something about how the code runs. If we look back at the code, we can see that it depends on the file roaddeathdata.csv being stored in the same directory as the code file. But if we send our codes to other people, they won't necessarily have this data. That means our example is not yet reproducible, which is a critical part of producing a reprex that is useful in getting help from others. We could deal with this problem in several ways. We could put a version of the data somewhere online, then load it directly from a URL using the read CSV function. We could also replace our dataset with one of the toy datasets that comes pre-installed with R for exactly this purpose. Another way to create a reproducible version of the data is to use the dput function. dput converts an R object to a piece of R code that can be used to recreate that dataset. We can see that the data in the road deaths data file is a tibble of 192 rows. A reprex is also known as a minimum working example because it's supposed to show the minimum code needed to illustrate a problem. So instead of including the entire data set in my reprex, I'm only going to include the first few rows. It's possible that the original error was caused by some issue in a single row of the data, in which case only keeping the first few rows of data would cause the error message to change. But for now, I can use the first few rows and see if the code still produces the same error that we're trying to deal with. As you can see, dput has converted the first three rows of the data into a piece of R code that starts with the structure function. We don't need to understand this code because all we need to do is copy and paste it into the top of our script and store the result in a new object, which I'm going to call road deaths raw. I'm also going to tidy up the code slightly. Now if I replace the read CSV function in the original code with a reference to the road death raw object, I've now got code that does the same thing as the original code, but doesn't refer to an external file that other people might not have. Before I go any further, it's important to check that the changes we've made to the code don't create any new error messages or change the error message we're trying to investigate. To do that, we use the reprex add-in again. If we look at the reprex result now, We'll see that the error roaddeathdata.csv does not exist in current working directory has disappeared because we're not referring to that file anymore. And we can also see further down the code that it now produces the error message related to the fortify function that we're trying to deal with. That's a good thing because the purpose of producing a reprex is to reliably recreate a specific error. The next step in producing a reprex is to remove any lines of code that are not necessary to reproduce the exact error we're interested in. Removing parts of our code that aren't relevant to the error makes it much easier to focus on the parts of our code that are causing the problem. I generally start at the end of the code and work backwards, removing lines and rerunning the code until either the error disappears or we get a different error message to the one we're trying to deal with. In either case, this means that we've removed a line of code that was relevant to producing the original error. I could remove one line of code at a time. But to speed things up, I'm going to remove lines of code that are related to one another in groups. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all the lines of code that control the appearance of the chart theme. When I remove the code from the end of the ggplot stack, I need to remember to also remove the plus operator at the end of the last line of the code that I'm not removing. 
and to check whether removing these lines of code changes anything about the error message we're interested in, I now rerun the reprex add-in and look at the output it produces. Looking at the reprex output, we can see that we still get the same error message as before. This means that the lines of code we've removed do not affect the error message, so we know we need to look elsewhere for the source of the problem. I now repeat this process of removing lines of code and then rendering a new reprex until I see that either the error disappears or we get a different error message to the one we're trying to deal with. As you can see, I can remove the labs function in the ggplot stack, the three functions from the scale family, and the geome smooth function while still getting the same error. I can also remove the AES function that controls the color of the points on the chart. This means I now know that none of these functions cause the error. Since my reduced ggplot stack no longer refers to the law column in the data, I can remove the line of the data wrangling code above it that refers to that column. I might also be able to remove the mutate function from the data wrangling pipeline altogether by changing the ggplot stack so that it does not make use of the KSI driver rate column in the data that is created by mutate. If I change the AES function inside ggplot so that the Y aesthetic is controlled by the KSI drivers column in the data instead of by the KSI driver rate column, that means I can remove the mutate function entirely. As we can see, making that change doesn't change the error message, so we know the error wasn't caused by anything in the mutate function. We can go further by removing the select function from the data wrangling pipeline, because all that does is remove two columns from the data that we aren't going to use. Since ggplot only uses data columns that we explicitly refer to using the AES function, it doesn't matter if we leave those columns in the data, but don't use them. The next thing we do is remove the rename function from the data wrangling pipeline. You might have expected that when we ran the reprex add-in this time, we would get a different error message complaining that the KSI driver column does not exist in the road death dataset now that we've removed the rename function. What actually happens is that we still get the error message about the problem with the fortify function. This suggests that error happens before the reference to the now non-existent KSI driver column. In any case, we'll change the reference to the KSI driver column to a reference to the drivers column that does actually exist in the data. The next thing we can do is remove the clean names function from the janitor package. Since we can see from the output from dput that we've copied into our code, that the only columns in the data we're using have snake case names already. This means the clean names function isn't actually changing any of the names we're interested in. Looking again at the reprex output, we can see that we've now removed almost all our original code without affecting the error that's produced. So we know the error must be caused by one of the few remaining lines of code. There are a few more things that we can try removing from our code to make it simpler. Since we've removed all the data wrangling code, we no longer need to load the readr or dplyr packages at the start of our script. We're also only using two columns in the data, month beginning and drivers. So we can safely remove all the other columns from the road deaths raw dataset. And since we're no longer doing any wrangling of the raw data, we can simply rename the output produced by dput to be called road deaths. At this point, We've removed almost all of our original code, but we still get the same error. If we sent this code to someone else to ask for help, it would be much easier for them to isolate the source of the problem, simply because there are so many fewer lines of code to look at. You might have spotted the problem with the code by now, but if not, then you could send this code to someone for help, or post it online on a website such as Stack Overflow or the POSIT forum, where code experts help with problems that people are having with the code that they've written. The experts who provide help on these sites are volunteers and they have limited time, so they are much more likely to be able to help with problems with your code if you make the problem as simple as possible by removing lines of code that are not needed to produce the error. In this case, the error is on line 15 of the final code where we've tried to pass the road deaths object to the ggplot function using the plus operator. But the plus operator is only for adding functions to an existing ggplot stack after we've caused the ggplot function itself. If we want to pass a dataset to the ggplot function from the left, we need to use the pipe operator instead of the plus operator. If we replace the plus symbol with a pipe, we'll see that instead of the error message relating to the fortify function, we now see a very basic chart. The fact that changing this line of code removed the error shows that we've successfully found the cause of the problem. We can now go back to our original code and fix the problem there too. Now, when we run the code using the source button, 
we'll see that it runs as we wanted it to and produces the chart we wanted. So in summary, these are the steps to go through to find and fix errors in your R code. First, don't panic. Second, try to understand the error message itself. Does it give you enough information to fix the problem? Third, read the help page for the function that you're using to see if that helps you understand the error message and how to fix it. And fourth, make a reprex. Try to remove as many lines of code as possible while still producing the same error message. The more of the code you can remove, the easier it will be to find the source of the problem. And if, once you've made that reprex, you still can't identify or fix the problem, then you can post it online or ask other people for help and it'll be much easier for them to help you.